Monday's top story on the popular financial website, Kiplinger.com, begins with this advice to potential investors, quote, everywhere you look, people are grumbling, and in many cases, rioting about the high price of food. Before you buy a 20-pound bag of rice at Costco, consider hoarding shares of Monsanto, unquote. It's true. While the rising cost of food pushes millions around the world into deeper hunger and scarcity, agricultural companies like Monsanto are posting record profits. The top seed maker in the world, Monsanto's stock, has gained 95 percent over the past year and 1,600 percent over the past five years. Monsanto's profits topped $1.6 billion in the first quarter, up 37 percent from the same quarter last year. Monsanto rose to prominence as one of the leading chemical giants of the 20th century, but its focus today is agriculture. A company statement says, quote, at Monsanto, we apply innovation and technology to help farmers around the world be more successful, produce healthier foods and better animal feeds, and create more fiber, all while reducing agriculture's impact on the environment. But critics have accused Monsanto of undermining local farmers and public health through a wide means of corporate bullying. The latest issue of Vanity Fair has a lengthy article profiling some of Monsanto's controversial corporate practices, from patenting seeds to fighting warning labels on milk cartons. It's called Monsanto's Harvest of Fear. Vanity Fair contributing editor James, Stale joins us, James Steele joins us here in our Firehouse studio. He's the co-author of the piece, along with Donald Bartlett. And we welcome you to Democracy Now!, Jim. Nice to be with you, Mimi. Why did you look at Monsanto? I think one of the reasons, it's one of these companies that's sort of below the radar screen to a lot of Americans at this point. And one of the things that fascinated us was is the transformation of this company. I think a lot of people think of them for chemicals, fibers, uh, all of those things that the name, that, that the company made its reputation on. But below that, in recent years, has been this remarkable revolution where they are now an agricultural company, a life sciences company. And they want to completely put their chemical past behind them in that sense, to concentrate on these new areas, genetically modified seeds and uh, artificial uh, supplements to increase milk production and so forth. So it became just one of those interesting companies that people sort of know the name, but they don't really know much about. And that's the kind of thing that's always appealed to Don and me. Talk about Pilot Grove, Missouri. Pilot Grove, Missouri is a little town right smack dab in the middle of Missouri. Uh, 750 people in the midst of a very productive soybean growing area. By the way, I'm now Vanity Fair's resident expert on soybeans. I'm not sure exactly where I, where I can go with this in the future, but I didn't realize exactly how pivotal soybeans are to every aspect of our food supply, uh, foods, you name it. And they're an extremely important thing in terms of ex an export crop in this country. Pilot Grove is in the midst of one of these great soybean growing areas. And Monsanto has been targeting farmers and a seed co-op uh, in that area over the last few years, accusing them of patent infringements. Monsanto, when they developed genetically modified seeds, patented the process. And unlike soybean seeds back to millennia, where farmers saved them, cleaned them over the, the winter, and then replanted them in the spring, Monsanto prohibits that. You are to re purchase a new bag of seeds every spring and start the process over again. They claim this is necessary to justify the kind of money they in invested to produce the genetically modified seed in the first place. But a lot of farmers uh, don't always know that. Sometimes conventional soybean seeds get mixed in with genetically modified seeds. They look exactly the same. There's absolutely no difference. And as a result of that, when they suspect that somebody has uh, uh, infringed on their patent, they unleash their investigative cores uh, and private investigators to look at farmers, seed dealers, and so forth. And that's what happened in Pilot Grove, and it's been going on for several years now. They've targeted many farmers there, and upwards of two dozen the last time I looked at things had settled with the company, had not gone to court, had just reached some uh, confidential agreement. But the co-op, the seed co-op, that is sort of the pivotal unit in that county did not uh, agree to a settlement. They felt, how in the world can we agree to this? We Farmers bring us seeds. Uh, we don't know whether these are traditional seeds or these are genetically modified seeds. You basi they're basically saying, you want us to be a policeman of our customers. So they resisted, and they're in court over this. But as a result of this, 
Monsanto has unleashed the full weight of its investigative uh, forces in this little county. Uh, no less than 17 surveillance videos by private investigators have been made of farmers in and around this town. I mean, this was eye-opening to us, the idea that a company is out there videotaping farmers, apparently in their fields, uh, coming out of stores. I'm not exactly sure where some of these videos were taken, but the, but the court record refers to those. And these are part of the, inf the, of the evidence that they gather to then confront farmers and say, look, you need to settle, you need to come clean, you're infringing on our patent, uh, it's time to, to, to really make an agreement with us. So, and it turns out, most cases that Monsanto gets involved in never get this far. When uh, the farmers are faced with certain possibility of litigation, uh, most simply settle. It's easier, they don't have the resources to fight even if they think they're innocent. Uh, and they go on about their business. But this is one of the exceptions, and this is why this case is so remarkable, because it lays out exactly the methods the company uses and so forth. Other farmers have talked about this in many other parts of the, of the country for, for absolutely over the last few years, ever since these genetically modified seeds were introduced in the late 90s. Jim Steele, you talk about, you begin your piece with Gary Reinhart. Explain what happened to him. Gary Reinhart was just is not a farmer, he's not a seed dealer, he's not even somebody in agriculture, but one day he was in his store in a small town in northwest Missouri, and a man comes in and accuses him of infringing on Monsanto's patents on soybean seeds. Uh, Gary resisted or denied this, said he wasn't a farmer, had nothing to do with this, couldn't figure out what the man was up to. The man became increasingly boisterous, and suggesting that really you need to settle with us because Monsanto's big, uh, you really can't fight them, you're just going to end up paying. Uh, and, and Monsanto said, look, you've got the wrong man. I'm not even a farmer, I don't even sell these seeds, I don't even have these seeds. Reinh Reinhardt said these things. Uh, the investigator for Monsanto apparently ignored this, and several months later, Monsanto filed a lawsuit in federal court against, like, the, store against the, the store owner, Gary Reinhardt, accusing him of uh, infringing on Monsanto's patents. It turned out uh, totally uh, false. Uh, he had not. Uh, he had submitted an affidavit to that effect, even though a Monsanto investigator submitted an affidavit saying the exact opposite. But when Gary was forced to get a lawyer to defend himself, and when that lawyer actually took this information to Monsanto's attorneys, uh, the case was immediately dropped. Most farmers are, are not really quite that fortunate. Uh, usually most of these things work their way further through the system and many end up reaching some sort of an agreement with Monsanto. We're talking with James Steele, Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter together with Don Bartlett, wrote the piece in Vanity Fair, Monsanto's Harvest of Fear. Stay with us.